Good morning. Happy Sunday. Um, Second Nephi chapter 24 and 25. We made it through Isaiah. But did I understand most of it? I don't know. Did I get much out of it? I don't think so. What I'm coming to realize is that basically he talks about uh, Jesus coming, Jesus' second coming, and millennial reign. Basically just the history of the world, the plan. He talks about the plan. And if you know the plan, you're not really amazed by it. I'm not saying you're supposed to be amazed by Isaiah, but the way that everybody talks about Isaiah, you know, anyways, or through Isaiah, um, chapter 24. Not much in there, except for in my personal reading. I did like one, one verse. Um, Second Nephi chapter 24, verse 16. He's talking about in the millennial reign or in the second coming, how Satan will be cast down to hell and we won't be tempted anymore. And he says, they shall see, um, they that see thee shall narrowly look upon thee and shall consider thee and shall say, is this the man that made the earth to tremble? that did shake kingdoms and made the world as a wilderness and destroyed the cities thereof and opened not the house of his prisoners. And basically in 16, it's like, is this the man that made the earth to tremble? This is Satan. This is the dude I was like following this. This is the guy who tempted me him, this guy. You know, I fell for his tricks. That's what I get from it. And it's like, this is the man? Him? I followed him? You know, that's how I kind of take it. I like that scripture. But anyways, and you kind of have to remember that when you're in those moments. You're like, okay, Pic picture him in that kind of sense. Like, this is the man? Like, okay really nerdy glasses, skinny boned, just like pimply pockmarked. I don't know. Anyways, it's my own, my own brain. Anyways, um, and then 25, it's a Nephi again, and he's just explaining why he did Isaiah. And, um, Talking about the law of Moses and why it should be done away. And, um, I think that's it. I don't think I got anything out of 25. Uh, no, no. Nope. It talks about, um, in verse 23, how it says it is by the grace that we are saved after all that we can do. And so it gives a quote by Elder Bruce R. McConkie that says, uh, ma, ma, ma. Let us now come to the matter of whether we must do something to gain the blessings of the atonement in our lives. And we find the answer written in words of fire and emblazoned across the whole heavens. This is the word. Man cannot be saved by grace alone. As the Lord lives, man must keep the commandments. He must work the works of righteousness. He must work out his salvation with fear and trembling before the Lord. He must have faith like the ancients. The faith that brings with it gifts and signs and miracles. Does it suffice to believe and be baptized without more? The answer is no in every language and tongue. Rather, after belief, after repentance, after baptism, ye must press forward with a steadfastness in Christ, having a perfect brightness of hope and a love of God and of all men, 
Wherefore, if ye shall press forward, feasting upon the words of Christ, and endure to the end, behold, thus saith the Father, ye shall have eternal life. And now, behold, this is the way, and there is none other way nor name given under heaven whereby man can be saved in the kingdom of God. And then it says, um, Are we persuading our children to come unto Christ and recognize that it is only through Jesus Christ that they can have a remission of their sins? Um, and so it's just teach your children, teach your children. It's your responsibility to teach your children. You will be judged if you don't teach your children. But um, in here it says, um, you must press forward with the steadfastness in Christ, having a perfect brightness of hope and a love of God and of all men. And that part, love of all men, eludes me sometimes, especially on rough days at the at the UPS store. But I guess it's a, a lack of empathy, which I think the world is suffering from, a lack of empathy. And I need to work on that personally. I'm going to try. But, oh goodness, I got to get ready for church. I hope you all have a wonderful day.